Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. Today's video is going to be my video on the Sephora VIB sale. I admit to you all, I actually contemplated not doing this video this year. Because we've talked so much about this at this point, the Sephora VIB sale is not necessarily the best sale to shop. Emphasis on the word necessarily. You all probably know that my Instagram account is really, it's really dedicated to sales at this point. And the best sales, that's where I post, you know, well over 50% off deals. And that's the thing is it's, it's hard to compare a 20% a off sale to, you know, 60 and 70% off type of deals, right? Alas, I do recognize that the Sephora sale very much can have a place. I'm going to talk to you about my own plan. I will be shopping it as well. But I've done a lot of thinking and narrowing things down. I know exactly what I'm buying at this particular point. And I wanted to just kind of give you some general tips on shopping the sale, answer some questions. I've had quite a few people ask me, should I wait for the Sephora Black Friday sale? Is that going to be better? And then as you may gather from the title of this video, I also want to share with you some thoughts on how to approach skincare in particular in this sale. Timestamps and links will be in the description box below. I will include information on the sale and I will include a link to the Sephora website that I will affiliate. If you would like to make your purchase through that, it will help to support this channel. So without further ado, let's talk about general tips and strategies for this sale. As I mentioned, up to 20% off, up to 20% off is not necessarily the best deal out there. But I think the reason the Sephora sale gets so much attention is first of all, it is a sale where we all know that we have this discount available somewhere between 10 to 20% off. Admittedly, when you compare that to Ulta's coupons, it is tricky because Ulta doesn't send their 20% off coupons out to everyone at the same time. So I think it feels a little more like a, a kind of solidarity shopping experience. We all have this time frame to shop twice a year. I've also paid attention to the fact that if you live in Canada, this may be one of the best deals out there. I hope so much that you all someday get Ulta. It will be in Ulta's best interest because <laughs> they will take over from Sephora when you all start getting the kind of deals that we get on the Ulta website. But yeah, if you're an American in general, if a brand is carried at both Sephora and Ulta in general, it's going to be better to buy it through Ulta. So I think that one really important strategy to have going into this sale is that even though there's a lot of excitement around it, I really want to emphasize, don't feel like you have to shop. I guarantee you, guarantee you, there will be other sales if this is not a good time for you. Just stay tuned. We are coming up on the holidays. We're coming up on Black Friday. And as a quick refresher for how Black Friday works at Sephora, it's actually typically a pretty small selection. I'm not gonna tell you to get super excited about Sephora's Black Friday. I went and did the Wayback Machine <laughs> again, and uh, I, you know, I just as a bit of a refresher for the Sephora sale. And in the Black Friday deals, they had some benefit products. That's pretty much something we can anticipate. They had First Aid Beauty's Ultra Repair Cream. It's usually one of the scents, but you can get a, a giant container for a really good deal. Uh, they had some cleansers. You can get cleansers for usually 40 to 50% off. I actually got really sad and nostalgic looking at the old Sephora deals. Do you all remember the Weekly Wow? It was a few years ago now, but there was a, a really good Weekly Wow that corresponded with Black Friday. So much so that... I remember all of us being excited about the weekly wows and kind of underwhelmed by the Black Friday deals. In general, I would say the best deals of the entire year happen on the Ulta website, sorry, sorry Canadians, on Cyber Monday. I can't guarantee you that. I don't really know what's coming in the sale. None of us do right now, but that, that has always been the best time in the past. I also want to say make sure to compare direct websites. This is going to be really helpful for you if you are a big fan of one brand in particular. So I'm going to confess that I am a fan of Glow Recipe. Trust me, I know that brand is polarizing and I'm not gonna twist your arm into liking them if you don't, but I do like the brand. I do want some of their value sets. And y'all, I got burned so hard by Glow Recipe last year. Last year, I didn't shop the Sephora sale. Instead, I waited for Glow Recipe's Black Friday. And do you know what they did for Black Friday? 
Do you know what the skincare brand Glow Recipe did for Black Friday? They ran sales on their shirts. They also run some sales through the year, 15, 20% off, but they exclude value sets. And you know, I gotta say, I gotta admit it, that is one of the perks of the Sephora sale is that it works on value sets, it works on sale items, there's not a lot of exclusions. There are some, you know, the ordinary is excluded, but not, not too many exclusions. So my advice would be, if you know you love a brand, check their website for a few things. You're gonna wanna check if they have an initial discount, a first time customer type of discount. A lot of websites will offer you 15, 20% off just for making your first order. You also might wanna check their rewards program. A lot of websites have really good rewards programs, a lot of great referrals out there. I've gotten a head start on making a list of referrals I mentioned this in Friday's video as well. Uh, you can get, you know, up to $10 off 20 on some websites, a 15, 20% off discount just for using somebody else's referral link. And then finally, what I don't yet know, but we can maybe look back to uh, former years, is that each website will probably have a Black Friday deal and it may be it may be a percentage off that is better than the Sephora website. And one more thing, since we mentioned sets, I also wanna tell you between the spring VIB sale and the fall VIB sale, this one is my favorite because again, you can use that discount on sets. So there's a few things I want you to know. First of all, if you are interested in a specific product, always check to see if you can get a better deal buying that product in a set. As an example here, the Patera SK2 set, this is the second time I've purchased this set because the facial treatment essence in here is the full size. The set is the same price as the full size essence, except you get a sheet mask and you also get a mini size of the toner. And then also check the value sets, especially if you're thinking of getting more than one product from a brand. For example, First Aid Beauty always has really good value sets. They did send me over this one. If you are interested in the Ultra Repair Cream Unscented and the KP Body Eraser, hold on, let me take these out to show you. The full sizes of these are included in this set. The set is $59. It would actually cost you more to buy these individually. And then you've gathered from the title, I do wanna talk more about what not to buy in the Sephora sale when it comes to skincare. So I actually have kind of a couple of so-called rules to talk about here. And the first thing I wanna talk about is this age old notion of you get what you pay for. Y'all, this is true with so many things in life. I feel like I felt it the most when we were shopping for homes. Oh my goodness, I felt it. Our realtor had us go in a few homes that were, you know, a little bit over our budget. And I was just like, it would be nice to be able to go over our budget. <laughs> but let's talk a little more about whether that really applies when you're talking about skincare. The reality is, I think that if you are somebody who maybe has more sensitive skin, if you have more, more challenges on your skin, for example, if you've dealt with acne like I have, that may not be true for you. And here's why, you know, a lot of the more expensive products do this thing where they include fragrance into the product to give it a characteristic smell. You really see this with brands like Chanel, Lancome, the much more expensive brands. What they're doing is they're trying to fight counterfeits by kind of marking their products like a cat, <laughs> hopefully in a much better smelling way. <laughs> And if you're somebody with sensitive skin, it's true that fragrance may be a little bit more of a difficult situation for you. You could have allergies to a specific fragrance ingredients, and therefore you may find that you do better with the unscented brands, be it CeraVe, The Ordinary, etc. Yes, you may actually have better results from CeraVe and The Ordinary than Chanel skincare. I would also say it is not a good idea to run out and buy a whole bunch of products that are full of active ingredients. And let me tell you, Sephora has a lot of those for you to choose from. If you choose to load up on these products in the VIB sale, get them, try them all on at the same time, you are likely to have your skin end up worse than going into that. 
I think at the end of the day, something really important to keep in mind, especially if you are approaching Sephora skincare from a more budget-friendly option. If you are somebody who is used to, say, The Ordinary, if you're used to, you know, layering three serums at once, which is standard for if you use brands like The Ordinary, do not go into high-end skincare with the same mentality. You actually will want to choose one serum, and that's it. But listen, I wanna be fair, so I will tell you honestly, I do think that you may feel you get what you pay for in terms of textures. I do personally feel that some of Sephora's skincare products have gorgeous textures that are very enjoyable to use. Let's go over some examples here. I wanna start with the Dr. Dennis Gross Alpha Beta Extra Strength Daily Peel. This product is so funny. I feel like if you look at the ingredients, you can't help but notice that this goes against all of, what do we call it, conventional skinfluencer opinion? It's combining retinol, vitamin C, and AHA ingredients. You, you can't do that. But if you can't do that, then how come so many people, self-included, have you know seen great results from this and really love it? I think what it boils down to is this is a product to absolutely avoid if you are somebody already using strong AHA products, if you've got your vitamin C figured out, if you've got a retinoid product, you don't need this in addition. But at the same time, if you are somebody who is looking for something that is very simple and easy to use and you know you can just wash your face, use this, put on moisturizer and you're done, that's the right routine. For this product. And yeah, if you're doing that, you will see results. If you are, you know, using that and following with the Ordinary's peeling solution, you are going to have a bad day. Like I said, textures can be amazing in the higher price points. I personally absolutely love the Alpen Beauty brand. I've talked a lot about their textures. And what I will say I really appreciate with this brand, I do feel like there is more room for kind of a better approach to sustainability here simply because it costs more to do things like Alpen does, which is manufacture their products here in the U.S from ingredients that they've harvested on their own farm. It's actually a very similar brand approach to Tata Harper. Tata Harper harvests her ingredients on her farm in, where is it, is it Vermont, I think? Except Tata Harper charges a lot more for her products and uses quite a few essential oils. Alpen Beauty doesn't have fragrance-free products either, but they work for me and I love their textures. This is the Plant Genius Melt Moisturizer. I just repurchased this. I was trying so hard to go without these, but as it's getting colder, I've just repurchased some of my kind of thicker, heavier moisturizers. And here's a product that I feel really illustrates this idea that it's not always true that you get more for spending more money. This is the new Guava Vitamin C Bright Eye Gel Cream. I was sent this by Glow Recipe and I was floored by how much I love this because its price point is actually a lot more reasonable. You know, Sephora also has $80 eye creams. Uh, Sephora has $200 eye creams, but I genuinely feel this formula is actually better than those. I'll put it up on the screen so you can see. I mean, it's got all of the brightening ingredients. It's got smoothing ingredients. It's a phenomenal formula and it's not that expensive. My next point is don't buy the wrong products for your needs. And I know that people are gonna be going, yeah, Alice, isn't that really obvious? I would say no, actually, because of hype. Oh gosh, there are so many products that end up really, really hyped. And uh, as a consequence, people buy them just because they hear about how good they are. And then they discover that it's not the right fit for their skin's needs. Back when I did that video on uh, my thoughts on one star reviews of my favorite products, I had to admit I didn't disagree with most of those reviews. I think one of the best examples from that video is we were talking about the Pharmacy Honey Halo Moisturizer. I really liked that moisturizer. I felt it was amazing for my skin, but I couldn't deny that those reviews, those one star reviews were correct in saying that it's really not a good choice for fighting in particular, dryness. Because it's not a very occlusive product. It's amazing for irritated skin, which as somebody with acne, I've dealt with many times in my life, it's amazing for soothing skin. But it's not the best 
in terms of just acting as a moisturizer. And I think that especially if you are not somebody who, you know, typically hangs out here watching skincare videos, you might not know that products do have strengths and weaknesses. And not only that, but you have to know what it is that you want your skincare to accomplish. Are you trying to reduce acne? Are you trying to fight hyperpigmentation? So for this, I grabbed a few moisturizers to talk about. The Biosant Squalene and Omega Repair Cream. This is such a heavy moisturizer. It's one of the heaviest I've ever tried. It is also very much made for sensitive skin. This one is fully fragrance free and it smells like it. See, fragrance-free and unscented actually have different meanings. If something is fully fragrance-free, that means it doesn't have even any masking scent in it. And this is fully fragrance-free, so some people do not like the smell of this at all, even if they do like unscented skincare. Yeah, nothing is masking that intense smell, I, I believe, from the omega fatty acids themselves. They, they have a smell. I also grabbed my Cora Turmeric Glow Moisturizer. I don't talk too much about this because it's another product where it's definitely not fragrance free. This one does use essential oil ingredients and it is also bright yellow. But ooh, this is such a good anti-inflammatory moisturizer if your skin does well with essential oils. I mean, ingredients like turmeric, which this is obviously very rich in, are wonderful for inflammation, but you've gotta know, do you deal with specific allergies? If you have allergies to essential oils, that's not gonna go well for you. And then I also grabbed my Edom Cloud Cushion Airy Brightening Moisturizer, which I do dearly love. This one is kind of more of a medium weight moisturizer that actually does target hyperpigmentation. I wanted to bring this one up because that's a bit more rare to find in a non-active formula. It's using a peptide to help with brightening your skin. So this is something that, you know, even if you are using more intense hyperpigmentation fighting products, you could use this with it because of its formula. And then I wanted to talk about lip products here because I feel like there is just so much confusion confusion around lip plumpers in particular. I am absolutely not somebody who enjoys the Too Faced lip injection style. It's just, it's too much pain and too little gain for me personally, but there are other options. So you know I pulled out my Grande Pout. I like how I, I'm still using the one that's the Ulta exclusive shade, but there is one on the Sephora website as well. This is a product that is made for your lips and yet also uses peptide ingredients. Now, different peptides from what I was just talking about, there's, there's quite a family of peptides. The peptides in this product are the signaling type. So what they do is once you apply this to your lips, they yell to the rest of your skin, hey, make more collagen here. I think that's how the peptides from the Alabama manufacturer talk, I'm pretty sure. So what that means is this doesn't immediately plump your lips. Instead, what it does is it plumps out fine lines by increasing collagen over a period of time. Now, I'm also going to tell you, because I believe in telling you all of the details of products, I don't actually like the texture or the smell of this product, and yet it's one of my favorites because, I kid you not, it is so effective. Not at making your lips look like you, you know, genuinely got a lip injection, but it's smoothing fine lines on your lips. And I also wanted to grab the Alpen Willow and Sweet Agave Plumping Lip Mask, which I also recently repurchased. I feel like I didn't value this one as much as I should have when I first tried it, because it too is an amazing lip product that has a different approach. This one is using Willow to help with a, a gentle exfoliation of your lips, and also it is in a very hydrating, and emollient base, which means it stays on your lips all night long. So I would say this one is kind of more for targeting dryness of your lips. If your lips are looking, uh, you know, not their usual plumpness because they're dried out, you might really like this. If it's uh, more of a collagen loss, you might like the Grande Pout. And then finally, what I genuinely feel Sephora does not do best. This is where I have to get kind of personal. In my opinion, if you also deal with acne, as I did, I do not think your best solutions are at Sephora. Now, I know somebody's going to disagree with me, and please know that's fine. In fact, I encourage you, leave a comment, say, I, I totally disagree. 
here's the product at Sephora that helped my acne. But for me personally, the answers were not in the, you know, 80 to $100 range at Sephora. I tried them, but that wasn't it for me. For me, it was, and I know I'm a broken record, but it was a Dapoline and it was the CeraVe Benzoyl Peroxide Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser. Oh, I do feel like I'm a broken record, but that's because it worked so well for me. I do feel there's products that may help with acne, but those were the game changers for me. I will still say, and this is my most expensive recommendation in this whole video, I will still say that I do really like LED therapy for acne and for inflammation in particular. And you know, a neat added benefit is that the research on LED suggests that it may be anti-aging as well. You don't usually see anti-acne and anti-aging in one product. So I will tell you I do absolutely love my LED mask. If you decide to go with the Dr. Dennis Gross, then there is a value set, like we mentioned earlier, where you can get a whole set for the price of just the mask alone. But I do need to tell you, make sure if you go for this, make sure you register your warranty within 30 days of the purchase date. That is my gripe with this mask. Otherwise, I do love it. And again, I feel like I've seen the most benefits in terms of it really soothing inflammation. And you know, what is acne but inflammation? But yeah, this is, this is optional. For me, this is optional. I like it, I use it. But for me, what is not optional, again, is Adapalene and CeraVe. Number two, sheet masks. I cannot believe that I used to spend $6 per sheet mask on this Sephora website. Oh, y'all, and I did. I did it so many times because now I have discovered the beauty of compressed sheet masks, which you can buy hundreds of these for $10, $20, depending on the size you want. I talked a lot about these in my last empties video. I switched over to these for a couple reasons. One, because of the waste of sheet masks, and two, because I thought it seemed like a good way to use up some of my toners. All you do is you take these compressed sheet masks, you drop them into a toner, and they turn into a full sheet mask. And it has been game changing for me and I won't buy any more $6 sheet masks, which again, I didn't even realize Sephora marks up the price of those. You can get them for less on you know Korean beauty retailers if you so choose to stick with sheet masks, but I won't, I love these. And last but not least, we've gotta have a conversation about sunscreen because as you well know, it is the most important step in a skincare routine. I have a bit more sensitive skin, so I do have to use mineral sunscreens. And this is why I really wanna tell you, this one right here, the Summer Friday sunscreen, one of the best options at Sephora, but at the end of the day, all mineral sunscreens are a little drying. I feel like this has to be the most asked question that I get, what's a, a non-drying mineral sunscreen? They're all drying, and the reason they're drying is because the filters that are used in these to protect you from UVA and UVB are drying ingredients. If you are like me and you can only use mineral sunscreens, then it might be to your benefit to look into Asian beauty sunscreens. Now I'm gonna say Asian beauty, I know that some people are still a little hesitant of Korean sunscreens. I'm gonna tell you, I'm personally not. I feel like there was a, a spectacle with them, but I don't think that mistake will be repeated. However, if you are nervous, I would recommend Japanese sunscreens. I forgot to grab it, but my Can Make sunscreen, absolutely amazing, $10, $10 for over an ounce of sunscreen. So you do have other options. And let me emphasize that the filters that are used in those tend to also be less irritating than the chemical sunscreen filters that are available in the US. My friends, that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope it was helpful. Uh, I did wanna add, if you have any other questions about products, I'm gonna do my absolute best to make sure that I can answer all of your questions before the sale starts up this Friday, because as a skincare enthusiast myself, I absolutely know that it can be very frustrating to find the right products, but I can also tell you, oh, it is so worth it. It is so worth it to finally get to a place with your skincare routine where you are genuinely happy with your skin. And that's it, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I hope you all have a fantastic upcoming week and I will see you all next time.